over at Shalom to the elect of Yah Sharala and Shalom to the other men, women, and children who Yahweh Yahweh Shah is going to have mercy upon them. Shalom to all of you. I want to start off by giving the much due all phrases, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Racha Ha Kodash Koloim La Abanawa Alahaya Nawa Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Racha Ha Kodas. And double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone. And much due respect to the sincere Akim who are laboring in the works. And shalom to you believers, to the Akim wa which will be your brothers and few amount of sincere sisters who scrub to the truth. Our Rathas at this lesson is edifying and playing upon the table straight to the point. It's your brother Malkaya. Representing Prophets of Pasadena, Texas, 77504 Branch. All right, let's, let's just, uh, dive into the scriptures. Should be a short lesson, little woman. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 13 through 14 in the KJV. And I gave my heart, right, my mind, my lob. Right, where the spirit dwells at my mind, and I gave my heart, my mind, to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail have have Yahweh Bashmi Alshai given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity, right? Useless and vexation of spirit. Vexation. All right. Vexation of spirit. Vexation. The state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. Something that causes annoyance, frustration, or worry. All right, um, we'll see some more into that. All right, um, you have let's see, oh, that's in Spanish. Um, so like, yeah, uh, damn. All right, some similar terms for the noun for vexation you have annoyance, irritation. Uh, anger, rage, fury, temper. All right, so the point is, the more you grow in this truth with the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, you're going to find yourself being more vexed in the spirit because you realize that everything here on earth, the fashions of this world, the fashions of being an American, is all vanity, is useless has no purpose and it's vexation of spirit it's very is annoyance frustration to the spirit because uh it's all vanity this is bullshit here man all right let's get that in the gnt very quick it's a lock, yeah. all right a good news translation i determined that I would examine and study all the things that are done in this world. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has laid a miserable fate upon us. I have seen everything done in this world. I tell you, Aslakia, and I tell you, it is all useless, right? Vanity is like chasing the wind. So trying to establish something here in America, right? Trying to chase the fashions of this world, it's like chasing the wind. This is useless, man. All right, this is vanity and vexation of spirit. You work hard 
for so long for something here in America, like a like a so-called dream, a goal, a career. You work so hard, you lost so much sleep, you lost so much so much things for it, and then when you finally accomplish it, you can be easily replaced from it. You can die. At the, uh, you can die as something that you accomplished that that took so much pain, sweat, blood, tears, loss, and you can easily be replaced overnight. You can die and be replaced within days, or you can be alive, and there will be someone that's better than you let's say all right it's no point pretty much all right it's like the more you have here in this world the more troubles it comes but the less you have the less words you have man i'm gonna read that again i determined that i would examine and study all the things that are done in this world the most high yahweh bashmiel shah has laid a miserable faith upon us I have seen everything done in this world, and I tell you, it is all useless. It is like chasing the wind. Just speaking as a man, I would rather just have a simple five, a simple nine to five job, a simple full time job. That all I had to do to get that job was just fill out a job application. Without having to go to school, spend so much years to get this doctrine and that doctrine, this degree and that degree, when I could just easily be replaced, man. I would rather just have a simple, regular job, live my day to day life, than to put so much time and effort to receive a career and then I can just lose it overnight. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Because everything here in America is useless. It's vanity, man. Alright? It doesn't last long here. The riches, the rewards of this world doesn't last long. It can easily be taken away from you. The status of this world can easily be taken away from you. You can easily lose it all. Alright? Verse 14, I have seen everything done in this world. And I tell you. It is all useless. It's like chasing the wind. All right, so we're going to move on to the next precept, the next scripture. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 13 through 14 in the KJV. And I gave my heart, right, my mind to seek and search out. Salaki, so okay, that's the wrong one. Um, Salaki, so we already read that. Um, Let's get this one. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 3. All right. Oh, it was supposed to be um, Salakia. Uh, um, I think verses uh, um, 17 to 18, but chapter 1, Salakia for that. Salakia. Um, All right, so the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 17 to 18 now in the KJV. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this is also vexation of spirit, frustration of spirit. For in much wisdom, right, of this, of this wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So the the more you know, the more it hurts. Um, the Good News Translation. I was determined to learn the difference between knowledge and foolishness, wisdom and madness, but I found out that I might as well be chasing the wind. The wiser you are, 
the more worries you have. The more you know, the more it hurts. And that's true, man. You know, many brothers can can also say the same thing. When you first came to this truth, all right, it was very sweet. But as time goes on, the more you know, that honey starts to become bitter. This wisdom and knowledge starts to show you the truth. And sometimes the truth is not always sunshines and rainbows. It's also painful, man. All right. That's the thing about this truth. You don't have a balance of honey and bitter. All right. You can't just have one and not the other. All right. Um, I think the NOT2 is pretty good, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check that. The New Living Translation. Um, let's see. All right, so the New Living Translation. So I set out to learn everything from wisdom to madness and folly. But I learned firsthand that pursuing all this is like chasing the wind. The greater my wisdom, the greater my grief. To increase knowledge only increases sorrow. Yep. The more understanding that you receive, that you're blessed from Yahbashim Yahushai, of his wisdom and knowledge, it's going to come with more grief, more sorrow, more pain. It will hurt more because you know more. All right. But like the scripture goes into, uh, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. All right. Um, let's see. Right, the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104 in the KJV. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Right, precept upon precepts, line upon line, little here, little there, just paraphrasing, right? You read, you read a precept somewhere now in the New Testament, and to get an understanding of that verse you just read in the New Testament. You may have to go to the Old Testament and read a scripture, a precept. So you can have more understanding of what you just read in the Old Testament. And then what you just read in the Old Salakia. Okay, Salakia. You, you read a scripture in the New Testament. To understand that more, you may have to go somewhere in the Old Testament. A precept in the Old Testament to understand the precept you just read in the New Testament. And then you might have to jump back to the New Testament to understand what you just read previously from the Old Testament. And then you might have to jump to the Apocrypha. And then jump back to the Old Testament or jump back to the New Testament, right? You, you know, you, you're all over the place. But that's that's what helps you get more understanding. All right? Rots is how that makes sense. All right? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So... The more understanding we get from reading precepts upon precepts, we realize we hate, you know, the ways of America, pretty much the ways of all the nations, man. All right. Because it's all false ways. It's the wrong path. All right. I think the GNT says something like that. Um, let's see. Well, this is a good one, too, in a good news translation. I gain wisdom from your laws. And so I hate all bad conduct. Let's see. I think the NLT version is the one to look for. And the NIV, I think. Um, let's see. Let me double check. All right. Let's see. The new international version. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. The path of these wacky tacky Christians, the path of the ways of this world, all the religions that's of this world, the path of being an Egyptian, the path of being 
Muslim, the path of this and the path of that, the path of this doctrine, the path of that doctrine, this religion, that religion, all the paths of this world is wrong. It just leads you to destruction, lies, miseries. And the understanding of the scriptures helps us understand that. That is only one true path, and that's the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That straight and narrow gate. Let's see the new living translation. Your commands give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. God. So right with, with the increase of wisdom and knowledge, which comes by you know, through Yahweh Bashmi Shai's precepts, right? Precept upon precept, line upon line, little head, little dare, we gain more understanding. And because of that, we hate every false way. We hate the ways of Esau Edom. The ways of the rules of this of this current age. We hate it. Alright? It's a false way of living. All right, it's not the right way. All right, seeing our people completely destroyed, our glory, which is the women, are completely out of order. They're completely against us. All right, to see our men completely out of order, to see us at the bottom, to see us in the in the state we're in, it hurts sometimes. To be honest. All right. Um, let's get one more. We'll close out the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 9. KJV. I will bear the indignation, the anger of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. And execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light. And I shall behold his righteousness. So because we have sinned against Yahweh. We have to bear his indignation. So a lot of his brothers for an example. Who has been deprived of women for an example. Because the women is, are our glory. They're supposed to be our servants, right? But we're deprived of that. We're getting like a taste, an example of how Yahweh Yahweh Shai felt towards us when we went against him. And we was chasing everything, everything and anything and everyone, serving everything and any, everyone other than. Our head, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, we pretty much we pretty much was ignoring him, and we was giving our attention, time, and effort to women, different philosophies, doctrine, other gods. So now he's putting, he's he's making us bear that type of uh, emotion, I guess you can say, so we can have. Uh, an understanding of how Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai fell towards us. Alright. Um and, and whatever other um indignation of the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai that you know you brothers may have to um bear with, alright? Especially having our glory pretty much being taken away from us. Alright. I will bear the indignation, the anger of the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Oshai because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Alright, uh, let's see what a different version says. We have sinned against the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. So now we must endure his anger for a while. But in the end, he will defend us and right the wrongs that have been done to us. He will bring us out to the light and we will see him save us. Right? See how shall I save us? 
and that second death, the thermonuclear fire, all the trials and tribulations, during Jacob's trouble, especially that ultimate one, that thermonuclear fire that's going to obliterate America, and all the elements thereof, which also makes up people. All right, except for the elect, the elect that's here in America are going to be delivered up. And our brothers are. We continue to endure. Right, so we can be kept from all the temptations, especially the hour temptation. Make it to the end. All right, so um, the point I want to get out of here was, you know, the scriptures does goes into you know to grow in the like in the grace, right? To grow with the wisdom and knowledge. All right, be prepared to start tasting having to swallow and digest the bitter part of the scriptures because the scriptures the scriptures are not all honey a lot of it are very bitter so praise how Bashmi Shai you have the spiritual stomach to swallow it endure it because we are commanded we are required to grow alright so for you newly brothers brothers that's coming in is true all right, you may look like young Garo right now, but real soon you will see your your consciousness change. Your spirit is going to grow. It's going to endure. It's going to harden towards society, even towards people who you may once be cool with. That that's still of the world. You may look at them differently. You may no longer look at them as a biological sister, a biological brother, a biological father, a biological mother. A childhood friend A girl who you once liked At some point you're going to start looking at them as an enemy Because those who are friends of this world Are an enemy Of Yahweh Bashmi al -Shai. So those who love this world don't love Yahweh Bashmi al -Shai. And if you truly Consider yourself to be a servant of Yahweh Bashmi al -Shai, You're going to hate Whatever he hates And you are going to hate whoever he hates and that may also apply to those of those who you once knew that's still of this world. Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai is trying to harden your heart, your spirit, your mind for the times you're coming in, for the times you're coming into, like the great deaths. And you're going to see and witness and hear about those who you once known has been judged by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. All right. So Avaratiza, this lesson was edifying and playing upon the tables, straight to the point. All right. So I'm gonna close out by giving a much do all phrases, honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Racha Ha Kodas. Double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops, a great millstone, and much due respect to the sincere Akim who are laboring in the works. Shalom to you believers, to the Aki and Wa'akwa, which will be you brothers and few of my sincere sisters who subscribe to this truth. DTA, Abad, Baba, Soon, Kwam, Yasha Allah. All right. Be prepared to see that little boy change. All right. Be prepared to witness your spirit becoming more cold towards anything and everything that's of this world. Be prepared to just having to eat the bitter parts of the scriptures. All right. So, uh, Shalom, Israel. Shalom.